تبسم ليلنا وارتاح وضوت شمعة الأفراح أخيرا همنا انزاح الحمد لله رب العالمين Can we all quiet down please? If you need to uh, talk, you can please step out for a minute. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. In today's hadith, uh, we have the very important recommendation uh, or the very important teaching of Islam, which is to work and to work hard and to not sit without work hoping for risk to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about halal money and wealth in Islam, the first step in Islam is that you need to be working. You need to be doing something, you need to be struggling. And you cannot expect, uh, as Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh said, that do not expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rain gold and silver. Rather, He grants to people through other people. So you need to go out and work and you need to trade. And you need to trade your skills or your time. You need to trade your expertise in exchange for wealth. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you your risk. He does not send down gold and silver. Now think about the Prophet ﷺ one day walking in the street and he sees someone begging. He sees someone begging. So in a scenario like this, our Prophet ﷺ says to the Sahaba, he says, by him in whose hand my life is, it is better for any one of you to take a rope and cut the wood from the forest and carry it over his back and sell it as a means of earning his living rather than to ask a person for something that that person may give or may not give. So he says that instead of begging, if you have to do the hardest of jobs, where basically a person who doesn't have anything, he said the easiest thing you can do and anybody can do is to grab a rope and go into the mountains and cut wood over there and bring that wood back and sell it to the people and live off of that. Now how much are you going to make from that? Very little. But he says to live like that is far better than for you to ask other people. Put your hand forward and ask them for uh, charity for sadaqah. The Prophet ﷺ said that in the morning go into the mountains and cut wood and bring it and sell it. And in one hadith he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save his face from hellfire. In another hadith the Prophet ﷺ said that the money that you ask from other people, the money that you ask from other people is actually not halal for you. This is not halal for you, except for three conditions, three situations, which are like very, very dire situations. Most people that are very happy to ask other people for help do not reach those situations, but they are just you know, ready for a handout from people. Islam teaches us, don't look to get a handout, look to give sadaqah, look to help other people, but don't be sitting on your back and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send someone and put money in your hand. In Islam, work is a noble action. Work is a noble action. And it doesn't matter what kind of work you do. The work of being an imam, the work of being a doctor, the work of being an engineer, the work of cleaning toilets, all of that is halal and all of that is honorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you are working hard in a halal manner, there should be no shame that a person should feel. If I have to go, let's say that you know somebody doesn't have a job and they have to go and clean people's houses or they have to babysit kids. Sometimes I tell people, they reach out to me, they say that I need help. And I tell them that, would you consider such and such possibilities? And sometimes people don't want to consider anything except for what they're comfortable with. But our Prophet wasallam is saying that it's better for you to do something even if you're not comfortable with it. Work hard than for you to ask other people. And it is in that context that the Prophet wasallam said that the best meal that you can have, the best meal that you can have is a meal that is earned through the work of your own hands. Instead of asking other people. Instead of asking other people. So uh, asking others is strongly discouraged in Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us that He will feed us like the birds. And the birds, they go out in the morning 
hungry and they come back full. In fact, some of the research shows that a bird eats about 80% of his body weight every day. And a bird, so subhanAllah, the, the example of the Prophet is so precise that Allah is not saying that He's going to feed you like birds that we imagine that birds eat a little bit, right? But actually because birds fly, they burn a lot of that food. So they burn about 80, they eat about 80% of their body weight every day. So imagine a 200 pound brother, I'm not pointing at anybody. <laughs> Imagine a 200 pound brother eating 160 pounds of food every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will feed you like the birds. And also our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from laziness. Just the way he's seeking refuge from the adab in nar and adab al qabr He's asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuge and protection from being lazy, from being lazy. Now our Prophet wasallam, he made dua and he said, Ya Allah, bless my ummah in their mornings. Bless my ummah in their mornings. One of the, just the way he's seeking refuge from the adab in nar and adab al qabr he's asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuge and protection from being lazy, from being lazy. Now our Prophet wasallam, he made dua and he said, Ya Allah, bless my ummah in their mornings. Bless my ummah in their mornings. One of the companions, he took this as business advice. And he started opening up his shop immediately after Fajr, earlier than anybody else. Even before there are customers walking outside, he started opening up his shop. He said, because I heard the Prophet wasallam making dua that the mornings are blessed. And this companion, no doubt, very soon after became one of the wealthiest people in that town. In, in that time, because of him acting upon the advice of the Prophet ﷺ and trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that Prophet Dawood was a king, but still he did not consider it halal for him to eat from this. And by the way, a lot of people don't understand this. The difference between a Khalifa and a king in Islam, the true Islamic leadership model is a Khalifa, a caretaker not a king. So the Khulafa al-Rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, they did not consider the wealth of the Ummah to be their personal wealth. But the, when kingship began after 30 years, everything belonged to them. Like even until today, you go to any country which is a kingdom, basically every single thing, including the people, are literally the personal property of the king and the royal family. But Dawood alayhi salam, Allah says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَاكَ خَلِيفَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ we have made you a Khalifa on earth, not the owner of earth. Although he was the king, but he did not consider that to be halal for him. Prophet Zakariya was a carpenter. So never look down upon any skill. SubhanAllah, begging is condemned except in extreme situations. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, he would tell the people, he would come and he would see a young man in the masjid and he would ask him, what is your skill? What do you do? So the answer was supposed to be that I am a carpenter, or I am a uh, blacksmith, or I am whatever the skills of that town were, they were supposed to have something. If he, if he didn't have any skill, a young healthy man doesn't do anything, he would say, don't come in front of me, I don't want to see. He was you know, encouraging them that what's wrong with you, Allah has given you everything. And still you are just wasting your time sitting around. And then of course, these are the same people that will start to get ask for help from other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tells us in the Quran that after you pray Jummah, فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْدَهُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ That after you have finished the prayer, then go spread in the earth and seek the blessing, the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everyone should have a skill and they should master that skill. Whatever it is that you do, master it and in fact, that is the best way for wealth to come to you, that you find what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You know, when I was younger, I used to think that I don't have any blessings from Allah. Meaning, I don't have anything that I am good at. And I used to try different things, and I used to think about going to trainings and this and that. But subhanAllah, once you realize that every single person has been given something. What is your skill that Allah has blessed you with? Somebody has been granted, maybe really, you know, there are some people that are really good at buying and selling. 
Me and my brother, we used to stand at a perfume shop that my dad ran and a perfume stall. And I would stand there all day and maybe sell like five perfumes. And my brother would stand there and he would sell like 50 perfumes. This was his skill, right? This wasn't my skill. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me for something else. Now, if I start to you know, kill myself selling perfumes, maybe that's not the best idea for me, right? Because Allah has given me another skill that I need to go work on. In that one, Allah will give me more blessing there. And in, for him, Allah will give him more blessing there. So find what it is that you are good at and work on that, leverage that. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq and protection from uh, staying away from asking from other people. It really, Allah, the Prophet wasallam said that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. Always aim to be the one who is giving instead of the one who is taking. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa natubu ilayh.